Greetings and hearty salutations. Right, welcome to Tech 3D. My name's Neil Cross. And it's happening. Yeah, it's happening, mate. What's happening? Um, I'll cast your mind back to just after Autodesk University in November-ish. Uh, if you weren't around then and you've just joined, hi, my name's Neil Cross. I'm an Autodesk expert lead, etc. I waffle on about Autodesk and slap them when they're being stupid and then praise them when they're being good and just talk about stuff in the world of Autodesk. But... After Autodesk University, I made a speculative video talking about the future of the desktop products and what Autodesk were planning with their with their cloud workflows, Fusion, Former, and Flow. Much speculation, obviously, but reading between, between very many bold lines that were quite obvious. But with a huge disclaimer that often goes unnoticed or intentionally ignored, that this is not going to happen for a long time. It's not going to be a reality. The, the, writing on the, the writing being on the wall for desktop products is not for a long time, but of course, you know, internet being the internet, everyone uh, uproar and, oh, no, you can't take away my desktop products, our company XYZ. But, you know, I said it's going to be a phased thing, it's probably not going to be a reality for about 20 odd years. Um, but we're going to start seeing the, the, the beginnings of this, this cloud future that Autodesk, that Autodesk want. Uh, and it's happening because yesterday, I think it was, uh, this was released. By Amy, I like Amy Bonds. I've met Amy a few times. She's uh, she used to be on the manufacturing side. I like Amy. Autodesk former our vision for a connected echo. A a <laughs> What's this? Uh, but I, I took a, a brief sort of whiz through this. I haven't read it in full detail, but I picked the bones of it and just thought, yeah, this is big. Let's uh, let's turn on the let's turn the camera and have a read of it. So Autodesk, we have a track record of helping customers embrace technological transformations. Sure, uh, but first by enabling the shift from the drafting table to the computer with AutoCAD in 982. Okay, all right, let's just uh, let's big ourselves up before we drop some bombs. Then with Revit in 2000, hang on a minute, you bought Revit, uh, right? Just calm down. Uh, introducing modeling, modeling based design and building information modeling, BIM. A few years ago, we extended the value of BIM by connecting architects and engineers to a shared Revit model in the cloud under construction and operations with the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Uh, allowing all stakeholders to collaborate on shared information. Ah, uh, it's. I mean, the Autodesk Construction Cloud has a ways to go. From what I've, from what I've heard, it's uh, it's okay, but it's quite limiting in certain areas. But I am not an authority to speak on that. But the architecture, engineering, construction. Ah, oh, okay. This is is this is this their new act? So they've got MFG for manufacturing. They've got ME for media and entertainment. AEC for art. Are they changing an entire business department now to? AECO, ACO, with putting operations, which, I mean, you know, it, it does, did that need to be there? I mean, I think they're adding in the operations bit to incorporate the whole, right, we're, we're acquiring tons of stuff for project management and, and supply chain management, all that kind of stuff. That falls under operations, even though it's still part of the whole construction project. Maybe it's just a, a, an intentional addition to to broaden this, but changing AEC to AECO, if that's what they're doing, is um, you know that's that's a that's a big change. It, it could, can use to change at rapid pace. Expanding urbanization is driving demand. Complex projects are stressing timelines and budgets. Talent shortages are straining teams that are already stretched. These challenges aren't going away. I mean, you know, just this. <laughs> they love putting out statements which would generally. Uh, rile up quite a few of their customers you know the time projects are stressing timelines and budgets you know there'd be so many people going hang on a minute your software stresses our timelines and budgets <laughs> but let's not go there uh, these challenges aren't going away so bim as we know it must evolve to meet industry needs too, too much data gets lost and recreated between the bim phases of plan design build and operate uh, we believe connected data will help our customers overcome these challenges but but first we must unlock the power of your data See, it's a different world, to be fair. Like, I think AEC has fully embraced the cloud. Manufacturing hasn't. And the, the, oh, I, I can't generalize and say everyone talks like this, but whenever you read something like, we want to unlock the power of your data, in manufacturing, that just translates to many people accuse an Autodesk of ste not, not stealing their data, but being too peaky, let's just say. 
Uh, uh, we don't want you to have our data. Right? <laughs> Leave our data alone. It's mine. To make to make it easier for you to move data between stakeholders and connect workflows, build intelligent processes on top of data, maintain a single source of truth in the cloud, and deliver what customers like Arco are asking. Okay, so we've got a customer testimonial. The architect's workflow has evolved over hundreds of years, said Richard Hogan, project lead and architect at Arco. Now we're entering a world that is data rich. We must evolve our workflow to create better performing, more sustainable buildings that fit into our cities. Uh, you may recall that we first introduced Autodesk's industry cloud today. Yes, I was there. I was in the room when it was all discussed and uh, presented. I want you to walk. I want to walk you through what's next and importantly what it means for the software you already know and love, including Revit. Autodesk Former will be the industry cloud for eight. Yeah, okay. This is this is a thing now, isn't it? AEC is becoming ACO. It will reimagine BIM by leveraging next generation technology to connect data, teams, and workflows, and enable more collaborative, concurrent ways of working. There's a lot of big, grandiose statements coming out of here with, with much promise uh, and expectations sitting on top of them. I'm excited to share that our initial former offering is almost here. And that's that's why I kind of turned the camera on and went, right, we need, we need to talk about this. On May the 8th, we'll usher in a multi-year. There you go. So this is what I was saying about how this isn't going to happen or be a, a permanent sort of perpetual... Uh, offering that you're going to be forced into for a long time, right? It's a multi-year journey. And when Autodesk say that, I, I, I believe them. I think this is, you're talking 15, 20 years before this becomes something that can compete with, I don't, I don't even want to say compete with the desktop products because it's, it's probably going to complement them in the short term, work with them. But ultimately, you're going to see cloud power with thin clients. Ultimately, I think that's, that's kind of where we're headed. But it's a deep subject. Multi-year journey when we launch the first set of capabilities with Autodesk Former. We're thrilled to be taking this leap forward and it's just the beginning. The first Former offering will leverage SpaceMaker's powerful AI engine to deliver new conceptual design capabilities, predictive anal analytics and automations. Right, I don't know much about SpaceMaker. I've tried it, but I don't, I don't really know what it's capable of other than you can just you know, on an iPad, I think you, I think you can do it on the iPad. You can just sort of have buildings sprout up and you can just sort of drag squares and populate buildings and stuff. It's absolutely not in any way, shape or form a competitor or it doesn't like a candle at the Revit. I mean, it's, I don't even think it's for the same. It doesn't go into that granular level of detail. So I think this is just complementary to Revit in the short term to medium term, to even the long term, predictively, right? Autodesk Former will empower planning and design teams to digitally deliver projects with outcomes in mind from day one, creating a solid foundation for all subsequent project phases. With bi-directional data exchange, you will be able to work fluidly between Revit and Former. Bi-directional data exchange. This, I believe, is, it's basically a, connect, a connector tool which will link the two products together Autodesk do, I must admit, they've, they've got a, a bit of a shaky history with product connectors. They sometimes work, sometimes the edge cases can catch them out, and most people tend to work in edge cases, but we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, you'll be able to work fluidly between Revit and Former, between initial planning and detailed design. So SpaceMaker for initial planning, Revit for detailed design. Uh, between the cloud and desktop to improve the performance of your projects whilst you're designing. Being able to work on the same cloud model across Revit and Former will give architects the agility to work iteratively, iteratively rather than sequentially. And that's a big, big change. So their vision in the, the immediate term is people are going to be doing conceptual design in SpaceMaker with this Data Connect thing into Revit. And the, the, the data is going to be both desktop and cloud-based. So it's... It's not necessarily a new concept by any stretch, but it's it's the start. It's the start of all this. We'll also continue to invest in Revit, uh, as we have to, as we have with today's release. Uh, the new capabilities in Revit 2024 are critical to getting your work done today, as they set the stage for next month's launch of Autodesk Former and its first set of capabilities. So, what's new in Revit 2024? Well, I mean, in bold, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff here, which I suspect is setting the foundations for the former links, you know, SpaceMaker to Revit Sync and Revit Cloud Model Bridge Connections, all that kind of stuff. Um, and a dark theme. I mean, come on, you tell me Revit's only just got a dark theme put into it now. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, we'll also continue to... Oh, I've read that bit. 
with your data, teams and processes connected in the cloud, you can make better decisions. Oh, this is just VP speak. Uh, earlier in projects, you can harness AI, machine learning, and the internet of things to speed processes, reduce errors, and predict and solve problems before they happen. I've been taken out, taken out of the VP textbook there. Like, that's just a canned line. <laughs> uh, all it's missing is the word digital prototype. Uh, our customers like Hogan at Arco acknowledge this is a big cultural change for the profession, but the rewards of embracing data and the cloud, he says, are worth it. Join me for a launch event on May the 8th as we reveal the first set of former capabilities and bring together industry leaders to discuss how data will shape architecture. Uh, I'm sorry, they've missed a few words in there. We'll bring together heavily curated and perfectly prepped industry leaders who are all on our side and who we've managed to have buy into our plans with minimal resistance to discuss how data will shape architecture practices of the future. And there you go. So not a great amount of information about what this is going to look like. What, what I, so that's the, that's the statement, right? So my, my thoughts immediately turned, because I'm like techie, I'm into software, and I'm, I, 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 I don't like high-level waffle, which is kind of what that was with a few bits, nuggets of certainties in there. But I'm thinking, like, well, what, what's former going to look like, right? What, we already have Spacemaker, so is SpaceMaker going to be bundled into some new login online where you've got a, is it a tie? I'm, I'm trying to picture like what this is going to physically look like. What else is in there? Can you manage users? Can you set permissions? Can you have suppliers who can dabble into it? No, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like what tangibly, what is this going to look like? So I'm quite curious because this is former, which was lagging behind the Fusion instance, which it's kind of went a bit quiet by all accounts. I mean, I, I, I assumed that the Fusion Cloud instance would would emerge from from the depths long before the AEC or ACO or in the M&E ones did. But I don't know, maybe Fusion 360 is, is, is a stealth. It, it's already there, right? Maybe that is what the Cloud instance looks like. It's just badge Fusion 360. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But there you go. Yeah, it, it's happening, mate. It is. It, it really is. It's happening. The the cloud instances multi year journey begins with for A Co A E C O uh, on May the eighth. So I'll probably report on that as it comes. See what if there's anything of interest in there. And um, yeah, mate. Anytime you talk about the cloud, the, there's always the nays. I don't want to call them naysayers because a lot a lot of folk do have good reason to dismiss a future in the cloud, right? And I, I get it, but it's a multi-year journey. It's not going to happen for a long time. And, you know, when we talk about desktop products ultimately being superseded and something else taken over that is potentially cloud-based, it's probably going to have some kind of desktop client that powers, you know, the, the, the compute power will be likely in the in the cloud or the, that's where the data will be held. And that's immediately met with, you can't put my data in there. Our company will not allow it. Yeah, but we're talking like 20 odd years away, possibly. I'm guess I'm speculating but a long time away. And the people who are in charge of companies now aren't going to be in, or may not be in charge when all this comes around, might have a completely different mindset and mentality. The world will be a different place. And there's also a lot of companies that we simply cannot go in the cloud. We've got military, military sensitive data that we work on and projects and government, this, that, and the other. The Autodesk will have it covered, right? They will have some way to have on-prem stuff for very, very highly sensitive, specific customers who, who can't go cloud-based. They've done that in the past. There's precedent for that. But generally, the rest of us, it's either like, look, you, you, this is happening, or you, you have to go somewhere else for your, for your CAD software, which is, again, always met with, fine, I'll go somewhere else. I'll go to FreeCAD, or I'll go to Blender. Anyway, right, thanks very much for watching. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. Future's coming, mate. Get ready. Here's the next one.